I was really wondering, I was 50-50 on whether or not you were going to be doing your interviews shirtless. I wish I could. I hate wearing shirts. And I've gained weight, so none of my shirts fit me right now. Well, my question is, did the studio or a publicist say, yeah, you're wearing a shirt today? Oh, yeah. Oh, I have. They have shirts for every thing I'm supposed to do. And I'm so fat, I can't fit in them. So I, I end up taking them off in the middle of the interview anyway, because it my buttons are just bulging. So what you're trying to say is publicists do have, I'm, I'm, I was going to make a joke, publicists have some control, but not all the control. <laughs> publicists and my wife. My wife picked out the shirts, too. <laughs> um, so listen, man. Um, You've done a lot in terms of comedy specials, podcasts. You put a lot out there. If someone has actually never heard you before or seen you before, what's like the first thing you want them watching? <laughs> That's the greatest question. I, I want them to watch. I won't. Oh, 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 shit. If someone's never seen me before, I think I want them to watch The Machine Story. I think I want them to watch the machine story. I was gonna say two bears, one cave, because I feel like that's that I, I share so much about who I am on that podcast. But but then you got to meet Tom too, and he's a snooze fest. So it's gonna be the machine story. You get to have Mark Hamill as play your dad in this movie, and I wanted to know how long did it take you on set before you started peppering him with like Star Wars questions and like, you know, because you're of the age that you grew up with Star Wars. Yeah, oh yeah, I saw it in the movie theater. I saw Return of the Jedi in the movie theater and on the ride home, I tried to get my Chewbacca doll to med to lift. I like, I was obsessed with Star Wars. I was obsessed with Star Wars. Um, <clears throat> I asked in rehearsals, I was asking him questions. In re like right when I first met him, I was hammering him for every, and I was asking like, does, does Harrison Ford smoke pot? Like, like the, I was asking him like grown up questions too. I was like, <clears throat> I was like obsessed with Carrie Fisher's energy, like in life. So I, I loved sure. her, I loved her. And so I just, just got to deep dive everything. He was, and I, I wanted to know, I wanted to know like who were people who were supposed to play the roles. And like, he had all that. I didn't know that Harrison Ford was just helping read sides with other people. Like I think Tom Selleck was supposed to play Han Solo. And then, I, mean, I don't, it was awesome. He was awesome. And he took the time to tell you everything. Like he gets that the weight of, of your dreams and hopes rest on him being cool to you. Like, you know, there's a lot of celebrities who drop the ball on that. And Mark Hamill does not. Yeah, listen, man, I, I am a, a, listen, I'm a huge fan. I mean, I, you know, Star Wars means a lot to me. So this is your first time, I believe, being number one on the call sheet. And you're the lead of like a Hollywood movie. What actually surprised you about, you know, like uh, filming a movie like this and maintaining like the energy every day? Because it's like, from what I understand, it's like a marathon when you're filming. Yeah. Oh, uh, so I never really understood like uh, actors needing to be in character and stuff. Like I didn't, I didn't get it. Like I just never acted. And in most of this movie, I'm just playing myself. So like I just, I'm in character every day when I show up to work. And then there was one scene where in the rehearsal, we're doing it in the rehearsal, and uh, I accessed some emotion, and I started to tear up. And the actress, my actress, Eva Babich, was like, that was really good. You should do that in the thing. And I go, I don't know if I can. And she's, well, he, she, and she told me, she goes, go be by yourself, and don't lose this energy, and bring it back in, and we'll do it, and we'll get you. And, and the director was cool. I had never been there. It was the coolest thing about acting, is like, I'm all of a sudden in this tent, like, thinking about my daughter, and like, our relationship was a little rocky, and I accessed that, and I was like, this is fucking cool. And then I was like, oh, dude, I wanna see what Daniel Day-Lewis does. Like, all of a sudden, you're like, this is amazing. So yeah, that was like the challenge, I think. When Legendary acquired the rights to your story to, to make the machine, uh, they, you know, st film studios acquire rights all the time, but that doesn't actually mean it's going to move forward. So when did you realize, oh shit, this is actually going to happen? I did. <laughs> Peter Atencio came to my house with a bottle of Blantons and, and we had been Greenland. I still didn't know what that meant. I mean, dead serious. I did not know what that meant. And he opened a bottle of Blantons. He's like, so we're making this movie. And I was like, but people are saying that the entire time. Yeah, we're making a movie. We're making a movie. And I go, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he goes, no, like. I go to Serbia tomorrow. And I went, what are you going to Serbia for? And he goes, starting to scout locations. I go, hold on. Like, are you being paid? And he was like, dude, my deal's closed. We're, 
He's, he goes, get ready. We're making a movie in a month. And I was like, shut the, f I really had no clue until we opened that bottle of Blanton's. Yeah. I mean, but it, it happens all the time where people, you know, a, making a movie, getting a green light is really hard. Yeah. It's impossible. I mean, I, I can't believe, I feel like I got really lucky. I feel like, do you ever see those videos on Instagram where the lady walks out in traffic and a bus misses her by a, a minute? Sure. That's what I feel like. I feel like a bunch of buses just miss me and I'm just standing here going, how did I get here? Like, this is crazy. Yeah, I'm really, I'm really, really, really lucky. I got lucky and I got lucky to be surrounded by like, and I'm, I, I know you people say this and they don't mean it, but like just it, crazy talented people that all knew what the fuck they were doing. Oh, a hundred percent. Um, when, what are you most looking forward to your fans actually seeing in the movie? Uh, I, I think I, there's a lot of things. There's like deep dives. I, like I, I'm excited that they're going to see things that weren't in the trailer. That's what I'm excited about. Like I have one friend who saw a tra a screener, a guy, a radio show. And he, his comment was, you didn't put all the funny parts in the trailer. This movie is fucking awesome. And I was like, yes, that's it. Like, I, I have spoilers inside. I have like little Easter eggs in the movie. Like I spray paint, painted Thomas fat. Like there's little things like that. Like the guy whose head we rip off is a UFC champion, good friends with Rogan. Like I'm excited for people to like find the little things that are like Easter eggs, you know? What, was there a day that you thought something was going to be super simple to film and it ended up being a huge pain in the ass? Mm, no, no, no. I, I, I I gotta be honest with you. I, I really just loved every second of it. I, I really felt like every day was a first date, and so I, everything we did was was just a blast. The uh, the the thing, the one thing that's like w was was tedious for me. I have tactile issues, right? Like in America, we're a little more sensitive to like people's people's mental health, <laughs> and. Uh, I didn't like when they put blood on me and I had to have blood on me for half the movie. It was sticky, it was uncomfortable and it had to be all over my hands. And that was the most tedious. And they just be like, put it on. And I'd be like, well, can we wait until I eat? Or like, like, and then once it was on, I was like this the whole day cause I was sticky. And so that was the only part of the movie that I was like, ugh, I would never be able to sit through like, uh, uh, be like one of those, like, like Eddie Murphy would do the, the cloops and do all that makeup. I could never do that. I would be like, I would be losing my mind. Yeah. I think a lot of people don't realize, uh, you, you hit the nail on the head, especially if you're filming like a zombie movie, you know, and you have to be in that makeup. No fucking way. No way. On that note, I got to go. I'm just going to say congrats on the movie. I really do hope it's a huge hit for you. Brother. Thank you so much from your mouth to God's ears.